So hello guys, this is our last talk and I think that is like the most important topic I see today and I'm very glad that you are here, thank you very much. Our next talk is about creating more accessible web applications and welcome Adrian from Wilhaben. Okay, good. Thanks for coming. Uh, I know this is the last session, so maybe you are tired. And I know that I am the only thing between you and the after party, but <laughs> just bear with me just for a bit. Um, OK, so my name is Adrian, or Adrian, or Adrian. I've been called in any ways. Uh, I'm from Madrid, Spain. I'm a front-end developer at Wilhaven. And you can find me in Twitter or GitHub on Polonium. So, if you walk in the street and then you see such as business, the shop, it's obvious for us that if someone arrives in a wheelchair or well, in any um, physical impairment or disability, it's very difficult or impossible for them to access this business. So, the, it's obvious that the, the, the solution for that would be a ramp or some kind of um, lift. And we even have European laws and sometimes country laws to, to avoid these kind of mistakes in the accessibility in, when we build uh, the buildings. So why is this so obvious for us in real life, but it's not that obvious when in the digital world? So when we see exactly the same business, an online shop, we don't realize that is it accessible or not. So let me give you an example. You're using exactly the same shop that we have in the street. So you have a light problem that you don't know where to find the latest, uh, the, your previous purchases, your previous orders. So you call the IT support, and they tell you something like you need to click in the button in the top right corner. Or you want to change your email and then you want to go to settings. So something like, okay, you need to click in on the button with the engine icon. Which is, okay, simple at the first sight. But if your customer is blind, well, that's what it says. So mm, there's no such a top right corner. There's no such a engine icon. They don't know what, what it looked like. So we need to have in mind the accessibility when we are developing websites. So let me give you some numbers. Um, Jess already gave some numbers in her talk. So more or less is the same. Like 1990, we were like 5.3 billion. Now we are around 6.5, 6.6 million. And the expectation is that the numbers are growing. So out of these 6.6 .6 billion, Four, more than 4 billion are internet users. So that's pretty much 53 of the 53% of, of the world population. This is you have an idea how many people are online. So when you create an online business, you're trying to aim as much people as they can. Of course, limitation by countries, China, Africa, but it's so many people that can access your web application, your web you, even webshop. And we have more than one billion people with some kind of vision impairment. So around 200 million have a moderate vision impairment, but 36 million are blind. So this is the people that I'm going to focus my presentation, not that there's other impairments, so hearing impairments or mentally and physical uh, disabilities, but I'm gonna focus in Visual, visual impairment. So, <coughs> web accessibility. There is a community called World Wide Web Consortium, and is a community that is was built to work together to build web standards. Some of these web standards are web accessibility standards. Uh, the Wikipedia, as well as the W3C, defines web accessibility as the inclusive practice of ensuring that there are no barriers to prevent interaction with or access to websites by people with disabilities. 
So we need to be very, very, very also concerned a lot about the access to information and functionality. It's very nice, and we all like when a, when a website looks beautiful. But it's not only design. Information and functionality are almost, almost important. So the W3C gives some guidelines and some best practices about how to develop. So I'm gonna, we're going to see some of them. So the first one is language. Uh, defining the correct natural language of your website, of your document, is very, very important because it helps assistive technology. We've seen a talk in the morning, say, Gay, talk about the screen readers. I'm gonna, see, uh, I'm gonna use screen readers as well. To choose the correct voice profile and character set. So let me show you the, oh, wait, no. Ah, come on, no, I cannot. I will show you. Okay, so that was very difficult. Good. So, it's over on Chrome. Um, is it too loud or is it okay? It's okay. Uh, but this one is okay. You can see the text here. Perfect. So. The first link is the link in English. So I use the Lang English. So link. Use this link to go to a new page. So the voice profile is English. It's understandable and it's good. But if I use a different language with the, with the same sentence, link. Use this link to go to a new page. You it's completely wrong because it, the screen reader is using the English grammar set. So in Spanish, link. Use este enlace para ir a una nueva página. I, I tell you, it's perfectly understandable. I don't know if you, if you understand Spanish, but it's very understandable. Maybe the German one is, is a better example. Link. USA este enlace para ir a una nueva página. So in English, it sounds very weird. Maybe the German is better for you. Link. Use this link to go to a new page. So this is like in German. Uh, character set link über diesen link gelangen sie zu einer neuen seite which is correct in german link über diesen link challengen sie zu einer neuen site so in english it's totally wrong so not only you can use the language in the whole website but you can mix between the text so horizontal heading i believe that in german when you don't know the other person you can say hello we just exist in an Shannon tag. So this is all sentence in English, and maybe in the so uh, so this is the first one. Leave that in German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so this is the this is the this is the sentence, and there's no language. The next one, only this part has the language German. So I need leave to that in German. Link. You horizontal heading. I, be I believe that in German, when you don't know the other person, you can say, Hallo, wie geht's ist Ihnen? Schönen Tag. So that works perfectly in German and English or any other language. So you need to know when to use every language quote or every language uh, tag for the, the dependence on the text that you want to, the screen reader to, to read. Not only the screen readers read uh, divs or spans, but as well the image alt uh, property. Link image. Developer uses a computer. Link image. Entwickler benutzt einen Computer. So you can use as well in the image alt property the, the voice over off. The language tag. Okay, so I need to go back. Okay, I need to go back to the slides. Good. That's language. Okay. I think I'm going to jump a lot between browser and slides. So tab order. The intent of the tab order is to ensure when the user taps, because when a user has a visual impairment, they use a keyboard. They don't use mouse. So they have to use the tab key. So they will, they will navigate through links and buttons through the tab. So how do we ensure that when they navigate, they arrive to the uh, in, they encounter information in the order and they're consistent with the meaning of the, of the website. So 
again, I prepared a demo. Okay. So, in accidental world, we read from left to right, top to bottom. So the natural behavior will be this one first, then this one, then this one, then this one, this one, and this one. But with the top index, we can set that the order is different as we as we want to 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 develop, right? Um, the next one um, is how to wrongly do this, and GitHub does it wrong. So I will show you first here. So you are navigating through links. The logical say that the next one is exit, but it's not, because the design ex continue is the first element in the DOM structure, but it's float right. So visually, it's in the right, but logically, or like semantically, is be before exit. The correct um, option to do would be to use Flexbook or CSS Grid to have it in the correct order in the DOM structure, but not use float. And you will see that he, GitHub does this. So when you navigate through the menu, after sign up, well, the logical said the next one is Bologna, but it's not, it's watch, star, and fork, and, and then the user, which shouldn't be like this. It's just it just float right. It's just like the first the, the next one in the DOM structure. So if you really want to go to here, then you shouldn't put it or first in the DOM structure or use Flexbox to visually make it different. So that's top order. The W three uh, C. Um, as we said, we they they create some web standards, and one of them is ARIA. It's called ARIA, and stands for Accessible Rich International Application, as uh, an Internet Application. Um, and it's a set of attributes that defines uh, the way to 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 make web content more accessible to people with disabilities. Um, so there's some rules or things that you have to have in consideration when using ARIA, and the first one is do not use ARIA if it's not necessary. Use the native HTML elements or attributes already existing, and we will see an example of this later. Uh, any ARIA attributes that you use will not affect anything in the website. So no design and not your content. Use the correct semantic HTML elements, and don't use ARIA to fix your errors. So if you make a mistake in the HTML, do not fix it by ARIA. Try to fix it using the correct semantic HTML. And using the ARIA does whatever attributes is very powerful, but please test them before using them because sometimes can collide between them. So um, this is some of the attributes. Uh, we are going to see, does it have it? It doesn't matter. Um, we're going to see in an example the first, the, the, the first two from behind here in the blue column, so ARIA label by and ARIA label, um, but you have a, like lots more like require or orientation or has pop-up if, if, if a button you click and has a pop-up, the user needs to know that the pop-up is going to be shown, but not visually for, for, for the user. ARIA hidden, for example, you want to hide something for screen readers, not visually, but for screen readers. ARIA checked for checkboxes, and then you have roles as well. Link, button, form, input. This is roles that you can use in ARIA. Good. So let's see an example of, of the ARIA label and label by. So ARIA label is an attribute to define a string that the screen reader is will, is will, it will read for you to define the current element. Uh, it should be used when the text label is not visible. If it's visible, you should be using ARIA label by, and I will show you how it works. So, again, we have two links uh, to, to call the support team. 
both look the same, but let's see what the what the screen reader tell us. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Link. Call the support team. One, it says call the support team. The other one says Link. Plus four three six 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 one two three four four three two one. So a number is always a number. It doesn't matter if it's an amount in an invoice or, or a phone number. The user cannot know. But what is important here is to say what is the action that is going to be performed when you click this link. So the same, and not any label is visible apart from support team, but you don't have call to support team. So you should use ARIA label here. The other one use title. In the next one, there's no meaningful uh, elements. At least for us, X normally uh, means close, visually. But when you are visually impaired, there's no meaningful. So, X. Oh. But wait, wait. Link, X button. X button means nothing to anyone, but. Close the current window button. That tells you the action that is going to be performed when you click that button. And this is what is important for the user with when, when they don't see what is happening. This is when no label is visible. When, a, when the label is visible, for example, in the second, in the second and, uh, so in the third and the fourth examples, we have a form that has two fields, name and address, but we don't have any context. We, visually, we can see that the context is contact info. But if you say name, well, you don't know which name it is. It can be your name or it can be the name of the product that you want to purchase. So you need to give some, some um, context. So with label by, you can group and, say, and tell, give me the context of the label. Contact info name, at contact info address, contact info name. So you're saying contact info name contact info address so you're giving you're giving contact info address you're giving more context for the per, for the customer same with the brand name mercedes brand name ford so you're giving that mercedes and ford are brand name brand voice over off okay. so you're giving the context of how to use this as for a screen reader and for the customer. Remember what, I, what we said before in ARIA? Do not use ARIA or ARIA if it's not necessary. Use the native HTML element. So if you need a button, use the button element. Not an anchor list, uh, an anchor uh, item that looks like a button, not a div that looks like a button. Because fo buttons are focusable, are clickable, and screen readers identify them as buttons. So, again, small demo. We have three buttons that look exactly the same. The difference is because the first one and the second one are anchor list, as our anchor items, that has a class button. So they look like a button. The second, the third one is a real button. The three of them opens an alert. Because in JavaScript I said anything with the class button opens an alert. But, and the first one is not focusable. The second one it is because I add role button here. So it's acting as a button, but it's not a button. So I can focus these two, but I cannot click in the first one, but I can click in the second one via desktop. I'm clicking enter or space. So do not use anything else that is not a button. The second one, they are, okay, f first let, let me show you how it sounds. It's over. Continue button. Continue button. Okay, so both sounds exactly the same because one has the role button, and role is an ARIA um, standard. But again, only this one. Now in. Now in. Dev continue button. 
You are currently a continue button. Now in an embedded page at Escotapanio. So this is clickable. Now in. Yeah. The second ones, they are both disabled. But, so disabled means you cannot focus and you cannot click. But the first one. Continue button. You are. It's not a button, so it's an anchor. So you can focus because it has the roll button. The second one. Visited link. Is skipped. You cannot click. But the first one. You clicked me. Now in an embedded page at app now. You can still. Voice over off. You can still click. So again, do not use. See, if you need a button, use the button element. Do not use anything else that is not a button. So we normally work with the design uh, department. And I don't know if you've seen this. I've seen it a lot. And they say, please remove every outline of any inputs and every button because it looks awful and it doesn't fit with our design. Do not do it. Just argue with your design team that Wex accessibility is very important because it provides a visual feedback for links that have focus. And when you tap, and if someone is blind, will not see anything. But if someone is mild or half or um, has a mild visual impairment, they will see blur. So they will see this focus um, around the inputs and the buttons that they are focusing with the keyboard. So Google is doing something new, um, which is a pseudo class called Focus Visible. So the first example, you can focus, and then you see the outline. Or you can click, and then you see the outline. That's the normal behavior that we have now. Now, it's going to be introduced in the standards something called Focus Task Visible. Focus Task Visible does that the browser identifies if you're using a keyboard or a mouse. If you're using a mouse, the, the browser assumes that you can see the button. So if I click, I don't see the outline. But if I'm using a keyboard, then uh, it assumes that I am impaired. So they will show me the outline. And we can style this outline. This orange thing, uh, I, it's just like this here. It's only accessible via Chrome flags. So you need to enable the experimental web platform features flag. Or you can use a polyfill, as, as usual, to develop your application that works in cross-browser. No, no, no. OK. OK, that's some of the HTML um, best practices that W3C recommends you to, to use when you develop a website. What about JavaScript? We have at least 90%, I don't know the number, but I will guess 90% like of the websites in the world use JavaScript now. So JavaScript is a language that doesn't have any fallback. If it breaks, it will not jump to the next line. It will stop the execution of that code. So you need to understand that. As well, usually, screen readers only announce content when an element is focused. So with JavaScript, we can update the content dynamically. Any framework does it. React, Angular, Ember, Vue. We can uh, update the content of the website dynamically. So screen readers must be informed when content changes dynamically. And this is that with the ARIA label regions, as ARIA does live. So there are two options to do that. And you need to decide which one you want to use. One is called polite, and the other one is called assertive. Polite means that the screen reader is going to wait until the current sentence is read, and then it's going to start reading the status or the alert. Assertive means that I will break the flow, and I will immediately announce the alert. 
So it depends in the status message is very important for the user to know immediately or you can wait until the current sentence is finished. That's why I put this long sentence in the button because I'm gonna click the button in the middle of the sentence to see the, to, to see the difference. So. Place over. Sending a message is important, so I will do it for you. So please click this button. Button. The message has been sent. The so message has been sent. So the message has been sent, has been read after the whole sentence. But what happened in the second one? Sending a message is important. The message has been sent. So it breaks the flow and read or reads the message immediately. So you need to decide if this information is important enough to, to announce it immediately, or you can wait until the current sentence is finished, and then it will announce it. Voice over off. So this is for JavaScript. Good. I want to show you some tools that you can use in the meantime and in the, in the development process. So um, the new uh, Google Chrome DevTools has some um, new features, which is you can, no, oh. So if you inspect the element, the, f the first one, for example, and then here you have a new tab called accessibility, and then you can see the aria label here that the, uh, the um, element has. So the content is overlined because it's not important anymore. The area label is more important. If you take the other one, the title is not important anymore. The content is more important. And you can see that there's no area label possible for this element. That's one thing that. Uh, sum it up. So yeah, content and title is overlined in the in the good practice. Aria label is more important than content. That's what is going to be read by the screen reader. Other, another thing that the new um, so in this case my buttons are background is tomato or tomato. I don't know. And the color is white. So if I click in the color, I can see here that the contrast radio has a number and it has an error message. So if I expand it, they tell me that for the double A and triple A, which are accessibility standards, they are not fulfilling standard. So anything under this line will start fulfilling. So if I move and play with the color of the text, you will see that if I go to the black, I will start fulfilling the double and the triple A. Now the contrast ratio between the, the black and the tomato, or tomato, um, fits for the standards. So this is two of the, of the things that the new Chrome DevTools have. Another um, tool is totally A11Y is the convention for accessibility and this will include this tab in your website so you can click and then you can see headings so you see there's an H1 here an H2 and it will tell you well there is an H4 uh, sorry there's an H2 that is followed by an H4 so you need to use an H3 afterwards not an H4 so you can check the accessibility of your website live in the in the in the visual uh, version of it. Um, A11Y project, accessibility project, is a community, so anyone can, can uh, contribute. And there's a lot of quick tests and tips and how to uh, use the title attributes or skip navigation links and use the placeholders. So this is very, uh, very useful as well. And let me go to 
So there is an extension called no coffee. And with this one, you can mimic some of the impairments. So you can see how someone will see your website. Or for example, if someone has, I don't know, chronopia, so the colors are different. Or someone who has a, I don't know, a left side visual impairment. So you can see how they will see your website. And you can say, OK, I want my content to be in the middle, or I want to be to content might be uh, visible for everyone, because some people don't see in the center, or some people has like blur, or like, I'd say fog, like this. So yeah, there is a bunch of uh, possibilities here. You can move it and play with it to, to see how everyone look at it. So this is some of the tools that you can use while you are developing. So I will finish with a couple of quotes. One is from the director of W3C. And he says, the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone, regardless of disability, is an essential aspect. And the second one, and for me one of the most important, is just, it's not just about disabled users being able to access your website. It's about everyone being able to access your website. So next time that you develop, just have in mind that there's more people than the usual that is going to access your website. So have web accessibility in mind because it's a very, very important topic. Uh, you can find all the examples in this collection in CodePen. I will share my slides in my Twitter. And yeah, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Bologna. Um, that's it. Thank you for the talk, Adrian. Uh, we have time for some questions. Do you guys want to ask? Yes, please. Yes, so you said that you're working with design as well, yeah? Yes. And that so you have UI designers and UX designers, so I think that this part is actually the part of the UX designers to actually like, understand and find a way how to give them the information and the good service on the website so that people will find it as well. Okay. Mm. Repeat the question for the record. Sure. Um, so you said that the UX and the UI department should should uh, should be the uh, responsibles yeah. of this topic. Um, I think we all should be uh, responsible for this topic. The the standards from ARIA and the W3C is part of the development process. But the UX and the UI uh, department should be able to understand what is the what are the needs for only design um, aspects so if a button is big enough in a mobile to be clicked then is it this is a design issue but if the button is an x and i as a developer needs to know what is the sentence that i that the screen reader is going to read so I don't, th I don't think it's a design problem, but more as a mentality problem. We all need to, to, to design and develop, thinking that they, some people, some people who's visually impaired as, is going to use our, your, your website. I agree with you. Um, some uh, of, of the issues are design issues, but some are development issues as well. So I think everyone has to be responsible for that. Would you tell people 
So your bug says that if you have a password form, yeah. it's more secure to uh, change the top index or the top order of the fields for security reasons? So you're not able to focus on the password field? Yeah, so um, probably, but for security reasons, it, it would at some point make sense because maybe robots are looking for the name or ID password and then they will focus and they will use brute force. For accessibility, if someone is visually impaired and they want to use your, uh, your website, they will never ever arrive to the password field because they cannot, they, they will not be, access they use keyboards and they use top key. So they don't have a mouse. So there is no solution for them. So there's any workaround that you could recommend or like any like? Mm, anything, anything that is focusable and on purpose, you take the focus out, is invisible for someone with visual impairment. You, you, you can access uh, this field if it's not with a top key. They don't use a, a, a mouse. So does it mean that I cannot basically pay? Because if I can't see the thing, or if you, if if it's not focusable, it's and not I can't there. see it, then yeah, I cannot. I, can yes, I cannot use it. Exactly. It. For you, it's invisible. It's, n it's never there. Are there any payment solutions like for visually impaired people that actually work? And no, but not she, like she's talking about the yeah, uh, password field. Yeah, yeah. Any field, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because so passwords are like everywhere. Yeah, but if you're going to a login screen and then you tap the first one and then it will say uh, con um, login form uh, username. Then you know that you are in the login form and the username. Then you tap again and you go to send. Then you never will be able to log in because there's, n for you, again, as visual impairment, and this is a very, very easy way to do, to, to test. You go to a website, then and then you tap. You put your screen reader and then you tap. And then you, you will only hear what it is there. Your, 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 your hearing sense is your, will be your eyes. So if you cannot tap there, it's never there. It's invisible for you. So it's exactly the same as for us if you delete it. For us, a mouse is how we navigate. For them, it's a tab. So I think it's not accessible for sure. I understand the security reasons, but you need to, act. this is the balance between what we say, designers against this. No, it has to be, or architecture in this case, right? Security, no, it cannot be focusable, yeah, but it's not accessible. So you need to decide, do you want to be accessible 100%? Do you want to be accessible, okay, we load down our accessibility, but we are secure? This is the balance that you need to find. This is, these two yeah. are, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. So your, <laughs> so your question is that um, how, how these two are clickable and these two, one is clickable and one is not clickable? Yeah, because the both are, uh, the one is clickable and it's not, my understanding is both has a roll and a button. Yes, both has roll button. So this button, the, fir the second one in the first row and the first one, yeah. both are anchors, so they are links but both has roll button. Yeah. So what we are doing here is to, we are faking a button for the screen reader. Yeah. So I understand that part. Okay. So the one about can see, but don't have to bring up the dialogue. Yep. Both can be Yeah, yeah. Both work and both are clickable. This we is, we is fake. Both are clickable, button is clickable. In the second option, this should be disabled. So it shouldn't be clickable. Yeah. But as it's not a button, well, I can click. Links are never disabled, but buttons are disabled. 
That's the difference in the second case. In the first case, the only difference is you're faking an anchor list, so you cannot click via keyboard. Same as in the second. If in second I focus, I cannot click via keyboard. I can click with the mouse, but I cannot click with the, with the keyboard. So people with no mouse will not be able to click in this fake button. That's, why, that's what I said when you, use, when you need a button, <laughs> use a button. The, 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 this one, I cannot click with the keyboard. The second one, I can click with the keyboard. Yeah. But you can click the middle one around with the mouse. Yes, yes. Because every link is clickable. Okay, um, how to solve flex order the same as the top order, right, with Flexbox. Um, when you use Flexbox, um, yeah, here. So, so if you have, this is the normal Flexbox um, behavior. If you use flex order, is is a similar um, error that we have with float. We are having a DOM structure, which is A, B, C, E, but we change C from D. But we don't change the, the, the DOM structure. So the usual uh, behavior will be A, B, C, D, but in this case, it will be first, second, fourth, third, right? Visually, it changes, but structurally, it doesn't change. So anything that changes visually, but not semantically, it will, it will not match between visually impaired and not visually impaired people. So when people tap, it will follow the DOM structure, unless you use flex order and tap index. So if you change the flex order to be shown in a different way, then you need to assign this tap index bigger, uh, sorry, smaller than this one. So you need to, to use in combination, because you can customize the tap order here so this one, actually, you can see in the code, I think I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, I have the top index 1, 4. That means this is 1, 2, 3, and the second one, the second, should be 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's, that's prom what, what you should do. Again, I'm, I'm just thinking loud. I haven't tried, and I, 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 we can try later if you want. But this is what m I'm guessing now. I would use, or I would do, I would use uh, in combination. So would you, would you change the tab index with JavaScript? Um, After, so coming at the normal version, and like a flex order sequence, and you just have to press this. Mm -hmm. um, changing tab order via JavaScript. Yes, it's possible. I've seen this a lot, and I've seen this in a lot of articles and when I did the research for this uh, talk, um, I personally prefer to use the built-in and what uh, HTML gives me instead of forcing the via JavaScript. Um, I think the answer is if you can avoid it, then try to. If it's if it's uh, and if it's necessary and you only need this, uh, have this solution then try to minimize the, the error. But again, as I said in one slide, please test it heavily. Like test it, again, it's easy. Just close your eyes, test it. I think the last question will be from me. And I'm interested on which do you think Wilhaven application is accessible? Uh, with Wilhaven application, you mean with Wilhaven website? Yeah, like, the. Can you like do you comply with all these things? We'll have an we'll have a website is not is not accessible. We are building a new platform which is accessible. So you're working on we it. We are working in a new platform. Yeah, that's great to hear. And and the new is as as accessible as we can. Again, finding this balance. But yeah. as much as I can we yeah, can looking push. forward yeah. to see it. Yeah. So thank you very much guys. Uh, thanks thank Adrian you. for the talk. Uh, just wanted to, to mention, if you're still in the town, like there is this exhibition, you might have heard about it, it's called Dialogue im Dunkel, Dialogues in the Darkness. 
it's basically the exhibition where you can experience oh, yeah, like uh, how how it, does it feel to be blind, and uh, you you can just go there together and there are tours and things like that. I think it's, uh, it's, very, it's very interesting. yeah. There is the same exhibition for like how deaf people are basically living and about them about their life and how does it feel like it's all hands up at the same location. I'm not affiliated with them in any <laughs> sort, but I would strongly recommend to visit. I think it's a good initiative. It's very interesting because you you, you see how how it is to be yeah blind for for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. You have a tunnel and then you pass through stones and then you pass through a different uh, floors and then you arrive to a bar and then you have to order and then you have to give change or they give you change and then you need to find the glass but completely dark. So yeah, because we hear about the things I already. Uh, I see accessibility talk more and more appearing in the conferences, but like to see to go there and actually experience it, it, it w it's great. I, wasn't, I was personally at the Hands Up exhibition, like deaf people, uh, and it was quite insightful and like eye-opening. It was like another thing for me, and I think it's good to try it out, so I encourage you. So thank you, Andrian. We have a small present for you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> so it's over. Thank you very much for staying until the end. I really appreciate it. All our team appreciates it. And we have an after party planned. And you can see the address at the back of your page. We have free drinks and snacks. So please come join us. And we'll see us later. Thank you. Ciao.